Hello, ladies. How are you? We are on month three, uh, week three challenge. And the topic of this month is the, is the way that thoughts uh, and the way that we interact with our thoughts, how they are so influential about the outcomes in our life. So our challenge this week is going to be interesting because I am challenging your perspective on the world that you live in. Your daily, you know, every single day that we wake up when we open our eyes, we're in a world. We're in um, an environment that is perceived. And we as human beings being in our bodies, we have a very, very strong kind of belief system that what we're seeing is real. Um, science, um, quantum physics, um, a lot of research has proven that the data that comes into our um, body, that comes to us through our five senses is very, very muted. It's very, very slow and it's very skewed data. And the amazing, as the amazing truth in that is that it shows us and it should humble us that our, you know, the concept of seeing is believing is a very, very limited concept because our ability to see, our ability to hear, our ability to touch, our ability to experience through our senses is a very limited ability. And um, it's been proven. So this is not just woo woo concept, this is, this is real. So our perspective is a very limited perspective that we have to have a reverence for and understand that even though something looks a certain way, even though something is perceived a certain way and that involves our thinking, right? Even though all of that is happening, we have to understand that it is very important that we are astute enough mature enough, willing enough, evolved enough to challenge our perspectives. Our perspectives, as we discussed in the very beginning of um, the membership, the foundational beginning piece, talk, we talked about our blueprints and the way our, we are so blueprinted from the world we were born into, which is our family or wherever, whatever people and surroundings we were in have had such an influence over our worldview, our perspective. So we, we all have, to all varying degrees with a million trillion nuances, we all have a perspective on people, on places, on things, on values, on love, on how when you walk into a store, we all have a perspective the way we believe people perceive us. And if you grew up in a home where you didn't feel loved, it is very likely that you're gonna be seeing the world through a lens that states that you're not lovable. Um, you can be being seen in your own mind, perceiving how others are seeing you. And there's a very good chance that it's distorted. So if I were to challenge you, I would say, are you seeing the world through fear? Um, I, I tend to believe that there are two, this kind of two forces, you know, on earth that you can really simplify that, you know, either we're seeing things through love or we're seeing things through fear and all other things like fall under those two categories. So this challenge is going to be that when you wake up in the morning um, and you look at your day, you're going to have a perspective. So the perspective is going to produce feelings in you. So the perspective could be, oh God, I have to face this day, which is a perspective that's going to have a productive effect. It's going to produce things. If you wake up with that perspect perspective, you're going to, your thoughts are going to go in line with that perspective. And then the, the, the way the energy that you bring to whatever you're doing is going to be from that perspective, people will react to you, respond to you based on whatever it is that you're bringing into that room, which will then unfortunately probably produce the exact same thing that you're feeling. If let's say we shift 
And this is it. This is our whole mission. And I'm just, you know, in every topic we go to, I'm going to repeat over and over again. I'm going to draw us back to our basic mission. And that is, I do believe that we are meant as human beings to be experiencing a state of being that is well with my soul. That the biggest myth that we have, the biggest problem we have is that we believe that outside things, circumstances, people, places, things, that those things are the things that decide our state of being. You know, I have to challenge that. So when you're coming into your day every day, and you're going to go through this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're going to, you're going to write down, you know, what is my perspective as I'm approaching this day? And you're going to write it down. And if the perspective is, let's say, you know, I feel anxious. So then I'm just going to look here. So now the next question, bear with me. So this is the next question. How did I develop this perspective? So now this question is, well, my perspective is anxiety. I'm seeing the world as like, a, a, what I'm, as I'm looking through these lens, this lens, which is distorted, d d you got to remember that. Don't trust it. It sounds weird. But um, trust love. Of, above all things, hear me on this. Stop trusting your perspective. Trust love. Any, anything that has love applied to it cannot lose. I'm telling you. Okay. So how did I develop the perspective? And the perspective, let's say I'm seeing it through, you know, like this impending doom, like something feels like it's going to be wrong today or whatever. And then my question is, so how did I develop it? Well, it could be, I don't know, or, or I don't know. Ask the questions. Hey, last night before I went to bed, I was thinking about this big thing I had to do, or I was concerned about this person I had to face, or, you know what, right before I went to bed, you know, I don't know. I just had like this little, this little thing with my husband or whatever. Um, or I was, or you woke up and you think about what you're thinking about. Notice what you're thinking that's creating a perspective in your life that is going to influence more thoughts, that's going to then give you a more perspective, which is then going to bring you to a place on that day that's going to bring more information because we have something called a reticular activating system in our brain. So if we have a perspective and then we have thoughts that are um, kind of shooting off of that perspective, what our brain does is that whatever is in our brain that, um, you know, that it's a scary day today, let's say, it's a day to worry about. So let's, now our, our reticular activating system is a filter that will provide for us um, thoughts, um, visuals, uh, We'll hear, we'll smell, we'll see through that lens because the, the incredible um, obedience of the reticular activating system is to provide for us like-minded experiences to what is happening inside, creating an entire false world if the perspective and the thoughts are not in line with value. So I used to... Um, and I still do tell you guys, even in the Women of Excellence challenges, I tell you, you know, shift perspective, pivot, 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 you know, have a negative thought, pivot away from it. What I want you to see here is we're going to kind of evolve to a deeper level here. And what we're going to pivot toward, we're going to keep it super simple. Every pivot is about love. That's it. So now what will my, so here, here, I'm going to go back to this and you can look at your, um, your PDF while I'm doing this if you want, but not, you don't have to. So basically I said, how did I develop this perspective? So you, you find what the source is, but it's not that important. You could say, oh, I don't know. I have a tendency to do this. I'm addicted to the feeling. I don't know. But here, the question is, what will this perspective produce by the end of the day? So what will that perspective produce by the end of the day for you? So if I enter this day and I just keep operating in this perspective, I feel anxious. Oh my God, it feels like impending doom. It just feels like a really weird day. I don't know what's going to happen. Think about what that will produce for you and really consider it. Then the next question is, what perspective would bring an outcome of life, value, and love for all involved by the day's end? 
And you wanna be creative in that. Because if you consider that the perspective of love would bring an outcome, and I, we know this, the perspective, the lens of love for all involved in every situation, no matter what the situation is, I don't care who we're talking about. I don't care how hard you wanna judge them. If you bring a perspective of love, consider what would happen differently. Because a perspective of love is not putting energy into what's wrong, the problem, how, you know, their bad, judgment. Listen, they may have done all of those things or you know, the fear of a conflict or, or the anxiety about this. But love says, Allison, all things will work well today for you because my desire for you, now I'm talking about a faith perspective. It doesn't have, listen, even if you don't have a strong faith, it's believing that something, I mean, clearly there's, there's something bigger than us. So when you look at that and you look at, you know, to me, higher, it's my higher power, it's my God. Basically the bottom line here is, is that, and this is a much higher perspective. Do you believe that the divine of the universe, that God almighty wants you afraid, unhappy, worried, angry at people, frustrated, judgmental? Even if you don't believe that, is it, do you want that? Do you want the outcomes of all of that? Let's say, even if there isn't anything, which I can't, I can't even say, because I know there is, even if the bottom line is, is that what does that produce in your life? And why would you want to even live in that? So the outcome is when I bring in, when I bring a lens of love through any situation, it is this, you know what? I know that this day is meant to be a good day. That's love. I know that this day is supposed to bring peace for me today. That's love. These are thoughts that are valuable. I know that today is supposed to be a day where I am expressing and giving love everywhere I go. Because as I do that, when, whatever I bring to the table of my day, of my small world, that is exactly the return I'm going to get. So when I, when I wake up and I say, how may I best be of service to God and man today? How may I best? If I don't know what to do, I say, who can I love? How can I love? Where can I love? Show me. Show me the way. So even if there's darkness in front of me, where is my love best served today? How can I love myself most today? What is the greatest use of love that I can have today? Now those, this is a, we're talking about kind of a spiritual thing, but think, these are things that are, these are thoughts. I mean, these are creative thoughts. When I feel stressed or anxious in the morning or anything like that, what I will quickly kind of go to is, okay, wait, where can I love? Even if I'm, I have tasks and I'm doing them, I'm doing things I don't want to do. The other day I was driving, I had to drive to like Astoria and like, and like help my son and like pack up all this stuff from one apartment, move to another. It was hot. Like so this is just like the last thing that probably anybody would want to do that day, like going through and like cleaning out stuff and packing up boxes. And I swear to you, perspective is everything. I chose, we talked about last week about decision, but this is related, all of it's related because it's our thinking. I'm in charge of my mind. If I brought my mind in like, oh God, this is such a drag, <laughs> you know? No one could deny that, but I chose, you know what? I'm gonna just do this. This is gonna be great. I'm gonna embrace it. I'm gonna, I'm, how can I best love today? And you know, at different moments, I thought the best way to love while I was packing up and doing the kitchen or whatever was to just listen to beautiful music and be silent and be a silent person in that space where busyness and dirt, <laughs> there's like shit all over the place, stressed people. And I'm just gonna add value in silence. Now that was my leading. 
And that was my decision. You know, and you can, it doesn't, it, in different situations, you're going to add value with having a conversation. But to me, love adds value. So if you have a worldview or perspective that I'm going to shift every day, and this is a, this is my, I, you know, this is like my mission, like per, it's a personal mission. It's not the broader mission, but my personal mission is I add value wherever I go. That's my tagline for me. It's not, it's not public. I mean, I'm, it's public because I'm telling you, but it's not like, oh, this is what I do. I add value. No, that's my personal decision about my life every day that I wake up. How can I add value? You know, and even like every time, like even when you start to get like oh, a little pissed off, oh, that sock's on the floor. Okay, I'm adding value wherever I go. I'm picking up the sock and I'm putting it in the laundry basket. You know, like, like shifting, shifting perspective, own your mind. Don't let your mind own you. Okay. Let me get back to my PDF. Okay. Then you want to know how will love, life, adding value, all of that, how will that change my outcome for the day? Suppose you're going to see somebody you just absolutely can't stand. And you know your perspective is anger, I don't know, fear, because you don't want to like or awkwardness or whatever it is, you know, that you're going to feel or whatever, or guilt, who knows? And you say, and those are feelings, but they're also perspective. It's also like, you know, because it's all a mishmash. So now let's say you say, you know what? I'm just going to go in and love and I'm going to look for everything of value in that person because that person is as valuable as I am. So I'm going to love me and I'm going to love them. And if the way that they are now, I, I just, I, I need to put a disclaimer in here. I just realized something. This is important. Any women out there who are hearing this as some guy or somebody's treating you like shit, and now you're just going to go in and love them and you're going to do their laundry. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I just want to make sure this is a hundred percent clear. Oh, I'm just going to forgive them and be with them. No, I'm not talking about abandoning yourself to please other people. It's nothing like that. It's only an internal experience and perspective. Loving someone who's mistreating you, and this I want to make clear, loving someone who's mistreating you is being certain that you will not let them mistreat you. It is not of service to man to allow them to mistreat you because then they're acting in something that's not love and you don't participate in anything that's not love. Do you understand that? So therefore you're operating in love when you do not support, co-sign, mingle with people who are harmful to others but your heart is non-judgmental. It's loving, but you're loving yourself. And the best way to love them is to say, you know, in your mind, I love you too much to allow you to hurt me this way. I love you too much to be a person in your life that you could do damage to because that's not good for you and it's not good for me. We have to remember, when we are good to ourselves, when we make the decision to love the right way for ourselves and others, it's good for other people. The, when I love myself through pure love, you know, that kind of thing, you know, God's love, um, whatever I'm directed to do, it's good for everybody else around me. Remember that. Put that in your damn pipe and smoke it. Okay, wait, I want to tell you something else, ladies. Hold on. Here in the beginning of the challenge. So that's what you're gonna do every day. You're gonna write that out. And then, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're gonna do that, right? Um, what, there's two more questions on there and they say, how will I actively switch my lens today? So that you may have to do it 150 times because you're, you're, you know, you're working your muscle. So when you start, this is what I do. When I start to feel anything other than what I believe is, um, it is well with my soul. That kind of great state of being like happy, joyous, free, not fake. Understand that because you could still be crying through it is well with my soul. I just want to make that clear. So um, how 
the question is, how will I actively switch my lens today? And when we make a decision to actively switch our lens today, like actively do that, we're going to say, okay, so each time I feel anxious, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize that as the, the destructive and disorganizing force perspective of fear or anger, same thing. And I'm going to look at this situation. I got this um, forever ago. It, it, it could be from somebody else because I know that Gabby Bernstein says this, but I don't really super follow her. But basically, one of, she probably got it from someone else, but I just love the phrase. It's, it says, um, it says, you know, when you're feeling something negative or something that's not right, it's not based in love, you ask yourself, you, what I do is I say, God, please reorganize this situation with love. Please create order and simplicity here with love. And I say that inside of myself and I let it go. That's an act of supreme love to cast that into a circumstance that you're in. Something's not right, something's chaotic. And then you're in charge of your emotion, you're in charge of your thoughts and you're saying, oh, those thoughts are based in fear. You know reorganize with the thoughts of love. I'm reorganizing, I'm re, re, um, reordering. I am simplifying with, with love. I'm clarifying with love. You know, that's, that's the, the shift, the active, this is the, you know, the actionable step that you're gonna do. Even though it's internal, you know, we think that actionable steps are all about physical movement and tasks and what I'm doing with my hand. It couldn't be more false. The most actionable step that you can ever do is an internal one. It's a shift in perspective. It's a decision to love through all situations because love is the greatest force on earth. I swear to you. And it's not cushy. Love, let me tell you, is pretty badass. It's pretty strong. Seriously. It doesn't put up with shit. Okay, let's go. Here we go. It doesn't put up with disorganized, chaotic love. It doesn't put up with crisis and fear. It doesn't. And it doesn't fight it. It just stands, goes away. This is important. End of the day. We haven't done this yet in these challenges. We're introducing this because this is there's a practice that I do and I love and it's it's evaluating your day at the end of the day. I think it's a good thing to add into your evening routine. I want you guys to start doing it on this week and we're going to be using it forever now. OK, so end of the day, what was the result of my shifted perspective and the thoughts that accompanied accompanied it? OK, and you're going to write that out. So you're going to do your thing in the morning you know, or throughout your day. You can even do it at your desk at work. You know, you'd be surprised. You notice, oh God, there I go. I'm afraid again. Oh God, there I go. I'm judging again. Oh God, shift, shift me to clarity. Shift, you know, apply love to this circumstance to bring clarity and freedom. Apply love to this circumstance to bring simplicity. You know, simplify this with love. Clarify this with love. That's your challenge. And let me tell you something. You want your life to change? I swear to you, if you do this, and don't get discouraged. I want to say this to you. Please do not get discouraged because bottom line it, this is practice. Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day we have to remind ourselves. That's why we're here together. I'm here to remind you. I remind myself when I remind you. Reorder everything with love, okay? That's your challenge this week. Enjoy it, okay? I'll be there to cheer you on.